So we point. just came back from a, uh, a trip. We were in, in Italy, and they had this um, open f uh, open um, forum. It's called Piano City Live Milano, and they mm. they have piano set up throughout the entire city. Oh, so right. in museums, yes. Yes. in people's homes, in the gardens, I mean just all over, anywhere you go and they play from 12 o'clock in the morning through 12 o'clock at night throughout the entire weekend. Wow. And you have all of these amazing artists and composers. Wow. You have Fazioli pianos all over the city. These That's are you know, $150,000 pianos. That's amazing. Right? And you just go from venue to venue to venue to venue and that's exactly the spirit. And the spirit yeah. is, you know, you go and, and people are playing and they make mistakes and it's no big deal. It's right. really no big deal. Yeah. Right? So, well, we don't make yeah. mistakes. Yeah, it's okay. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, I think what's really fun is to have seen it grow. I mean, it went from these three or four concerts at St. John's with all 40 players descending on Houston, which we still do, to individual concerts so you get to know the musicians yeah. individually. And so that has grown exponentially. Now we do about 30 concerts a year right. in 16 to 15 different venues. Um, last year it was 16 and so we're just always all over Houston in a way that invites people in and has them be able to access what we do because that's, that's the right. biggest word for us is access. Right. We don't do outreach. Right. Outreach to me means you're doing you're it's trying to pull them super towards weird, you, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, instead, right. and it, it's not like we can go out to everyone. That's really not what we can do. But what we can do is be in a place that people feel like it's theirs. And I think that's the collaboration that I happens think you've so successfully created that. Oh, thank you. Because you, I feel that and I sense that. So we went to the wrestler, right? And I was oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I was telling people about that, and they're like, mm, I don't get that. And I said, but you know, it, 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 it's got to kind of open it up a little bit and just kind of yep. be very um, receptive to something that's a little different, no. yep. right? Yep. And then when Everybody started coming out in the audience, and I'm like, "Where's Alicia?" Oh, he's in the other. <laughs> and it was just like I said, it was like it was, it was like a family picnic. That's and right. I, and I think that's really <laughs> the success of what you guys. Picnic. Yeah, what you've got. <laughs> and then you play so you know the the the, the chamber orchestra is so good. Oh, thank you. No, really, yeah, the music. Thanks. You know, aside from having fun, right. but you you think about the quality of the music, yeah. right? And you guys are like, music. yeah, you guys yeah. do that really well thank as you. well. That's what's so fun too. It's yeah. just to have that ability, but then to let go. I think that's a really important piece. Is. Yeah. And then we, of course, what we're most known for are our commissions. Right. The fact that we release new music into the world continuously. We've done 79 world premiere commissions, which um, already means we're the third largest commissioning organization in wow. the United States. Didn't know that. Okay. But next season we actually have 21 20. planned okay. and we'll be to 100 by the end wow. of season 15. Wow. Um, yes, it's really exciting. So you've got a debut album as well. Yes, no? yeah. yes, Visions Take Flight. Yeah. Yes. And the director on that that um, is also a Grammy winner, no? Mayan yeah. Chen. Yeah. Well, and she is our first artistic partner. We named um, her as our first artistic partner, which means we'll have other people collaboratively work with us on a regular basis. We don't have a named conductor. We have people who come in and out as in Guest relationship again. Yeah, sure. But she was one we wanted to be Where in Where is she from? With. What's her background? Really. Yeah. She is from Taiwan. Taiwan. And she in was Taiwan. in Memphis. Yeah. She was in um, Atlanta. And now she does Chicago Sinfonietta, which is wow. a really great group as well. Okay. And so she's just always willing to take chances. For that album, which is so unusual, I asked my musicians what pieces they wanted to put on yeah, the album. I read that. And that's yeah. never done. And yeah. so they picked It's very collaborative, yes, right? Exactly. It's rather than saying, okay, it's not it's not this is what I want to do. As no. an artistic director, right. this is something let's collaborate and see what we all would like to do and what yeah. it's gonna be. You do have to curate. I mean yeah. there is that time type of thing of knowing where the stitch goes and how to piece a quilt together. Just like every concert, the con conductor can collaborate with me on what I know musicians want to play and which composer we're premiering and who's soloing. So all of these schemes are woven together and that's really my job, right. is to weave the schemes because I can give that to a conductor and the conductor says, oh, here's something that goes great with that. The conductors that won't really work with us well are people who are like, I only conduct this, right. this and here's what right. I'm bringing. Yes. And you're like, that right. doesn't work. Right. <laughs> That's not in relationship with anybody, right. you know. So you're so. in on the on the artistic director side. Yes. So that's that aside from all the other things that you do in the other side, and then of course play the oboe. But right. um, that that's challenging in itself because you put a program together, right? right. And you've got to think about this um, 12 months down the road, right? And there's uh, a lot two of years. Uh, two years. So Two years down. We've got our 15 yeah. and 16. That's amazing. So up, you're, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're, we're out. Do you sleep at all? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, more and more the older yeah, I get. Okay. But yeah. <laughs> yes. So two yeah. years down the road. So. There's probably a lot of things that you have to filter, right? Because yes. you're creative, yeah, right? Constant, and you really, yeah. when when you think of Roku, you think of just the, our musicians and musicians that are out there seem to be frustrated, right? Because they see a path yeah. and they get kind of settled in mm -hmm. this, and they think this is the only way that they can get right. 
down that journey, and we 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 we'd like to share that message that no, no, it's, there's, it's wide open. It's wide open. It's as wide open as every other field, and yeah. you. But I think one of our core values, I know one of our core values, is not innovation for innovation's sake. We don't do more just to do more. We, we are strategic in what we choose. We always point back to our mission, which is shaping the future of classical music. And it goes a little further than that. Shaping the future of classical music through energizing, modernizing, and personalizing yeah. the concert experience. Yeah. And so, but just the beginning of that, we can always point to, are we really doing that if we're gonna do this? And if it was just me, if it was just me, I couldn't do this forever. I just couldn't. Instead, you say to these unchambered concerts, okay, first fleet, it's your turn to do a chamber concert. You curate the whole thing. Wow. Do you want money for commissioning? You can have it. Okay. That kind of thing. It's, it's a spread out and a release into people's creativity as yes. opposed to me dictating that. Same in our team. Um, I, you know, this could not go any further if we hadn't had Amy join us two years ago to take over the administrative side right. and to be my thought partner in right. the most beautiful way. I mean, right. yin and yang, extreme. Right. And, right. and the same Erin um, Tsai, who is an oboist in her own right, beautiful obo oboist as personnel manager, and she's got a brain like a, a computer. It's unreal. <laughs> and Greta, marketing, and, yeah. and I mean, on no, and on. All these people that are pieces, they're not really necessarily peeling away from from what I was doing before, instead they're additive right. and furthering their own expansion of what's what it could become. That's absolutely And so true. that to me is what's but really exciting. But that's a vision, exciting. right? And yes. that's something that you as a leader right. understand that you at some point you've got to open it up and yes. you can't do it all by yourself. No. And you no. want collaborative, creative yes. input, right? Yes. So that you can hand things off and then they can share back. Because sometimes we all think that, you know, my idea is the best idea, right? <laughs> I know musicians sometimes they say, this is the music and this is the way I'm going to play it and that's the way it is. But yeah. if you just kind of think a little bit and have a little bit of flexibility, I mean, it's... You do surprised. have to say no. You right. have to be the one that, again, curates it. But yeah. you do, again, have to surround yourself with people that tell you no. And I think it just it, it just comes down to, are, are you a human that I like? <laughs> <laughs> and if I like you, then we can do yeah, things. And do you like me? It's right. like a, I just keep Tell saying Tell me a little a bit about the process of the musicians. Are they core musicians? Yeah. Are they? All 40. All 40. Yeah. So they're all core musicians. Do you have openings? And is there a process of how you would um, select? Uh, we haven't had one in a long time, and I think when we do, it's more just um, who, they have to be able to be comfortable doing a concerto as well as sit back down and play the concert as well as doing their own chamber concert and getting it broadcast and doing it live. And so there's a certain, not, not level, but I think a comfort of their abilities that mm -hmm. to get there, but they also have to Here's an example. One of the people who came to, to not really audition, but play with us, um, said that in her orchestra, she has to play in a bubble. She feels like she's in a bubble, some ways, and her own isolation. And when she came to play with us, she said she felt like I kept going, pop, pop. <laughs> And I think that's important, that yeah. there's a connectivity there that has to be. Um, and that's that give and take mm -hmm. idea. Um, so just, I guess really it's just when they play in our um, almost dating, <laughs> you have to date, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's how it Getting works. Getting to know each other. Yeah, right? yeah I think yeah. that's it. But really we don't have people not come uh, unless they're, they come from their own major jobs. So okay. we do have subs every now and then, right. but it's not very often. Not very often. It, um, especially because- So it's a full season, right? It yeah. is a full yeah. season. And most people come at least five or six times a year because they do the four concerts that are the full orchestra and then mm -hmm. they do chamber concerts throughout the year. So most people are at least doing five to six concerts with us a year. A year, okay. But that mixes and matches, which that makes up the 30. Right. So. Right. But you're a full chamber, so it's- Yeah, uh, exactly. And we're a full chamber orchestra, which is a good thing you said that because yeah. a lot of people say their chamber orchestras in their string group. Right. Um, that's right. 18 or 20, we're yes. 40. And you're that's 40. A, that's because right. an oboe has started it and I wasn't yeah. gonna sit there and watch <laughs> it play all the time, so. How often do you practice and play? When do you have time <laughs> to practice and play? Again, ruthless prioritization. Yeah, you find good. out what you can't play and get it not that way anymore. And then, <laughs> then you make reads. Are your, so your, is your husband and your, are your children musically, are they going that? No. I know when we talked about the one is in China, right? <laughs> yes, so, I think yeah. that's where he got the ability with his musical ability. He, okay. he can hear the tones in Chinese so well wow. and just imitate them so well. That's great. Um, one of his teachers said that, her, her daughter said he's the best 
American speaker of Chinese wow. she's ever heard. So wow. that's, it's really that's cool. A yeah, he's 19. Yes, so. that's not easy. And no. with a 19-year-old brain, that's right. uh, pretty right. good. That's right. very good. Yes. That's a compliment to yes. mom and dad, I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so no, no, but I will say, I mean, our second one actually does marksman. Um, he's a marksman shooter. He does wow. some target shooting, and okay. it's as precise and the way target to shooting with a. Uh, gun rifle, or bow and rifle, kind of and but the yeah. idea that it's the precision and the training in that is identical Discipline, to right. music, yeah. identical. Yeah. Okay. The the breath, the the body use, it's fascinating. He's working with an Olympic coach, and it's Good just for him. fascinating. Right. So. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, you always find your own different things. I did. A cobbler's kids have no shoes, so yeah, <laughs> my kids. <laughs> well put. <laughs> my well put. my older one has a little song on Spotify that he did with a band, so it's great. That's good. <laughs> I, I got to mention this also. The Roko's very own mini wall. Oh yay! Right? Is that very cool? Yes. Go take Not everyone. Picture. Not every chamber orchestra has one of these. <laughs> I think that's you in the yeah. picture. I'm not sure. Hashtag right? Roko play. But you, you guys Hashtag really Roko tell them where, where they can go look at this because this is actually a Thank citywide you. project. Yes. Right? And it's very cool that the city has invested in the arts, right? It's so, so great. I don't know if they yeah, can see that, up, but um, tell murals. them a little bit about that. So yeah, you have to pick those um, electric boxes at all the lights. The traffic yes, signal the traffic boxes. Signal yeah, boxes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you have to submit for approval, and then you have to find the right graphic person to do it. But yes, this woman, Jexy is her name. She did the most amazing one. It's interactive. You can go pretend like you're playing things. Yeah, I see. And it's got a piece that we had commissioned called Anthem of Hope, Houston Strong. Yeah, that's which a beautiful piece. Is about There's the a message with that. Heroes. We should talk a little bit about yeah. that today. That's sure. So but yeah, please go. It's, yeah. it's hashtag Roco Play, and you go take a photo of it and, and hashtag it. It's across from the Apple Store in the Highland Is Village. Is that you in the picture? So, yes. Yeah, nice. okay. <laughs> just just want to get yes. that out there. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. Just don't put, like, it looks like you could put your mouth on the instrument. Don't do that. It's don't an do electric that, right? box. <laughs> don't do that. It's in anyway. the city, right? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, yeah, so that particular that was piece. Fun. Yes. That's fun. You our guys are probably the only chamber orchestra that I know of that has their own oh, thanks. You know, piece of art piece. Well, we like can't that, put yeah. our Roco on it because it's not what it is. So if you'd go to hashtag it for us, it would help us a lot. Okay, so we can do that. <laughs> Please. Right. So audience, Yay, you know, did you go hear take that? a picture. And good, if you good. do that, you get a prize. So oh, go check on our you guys website. Are, you guys are big with the raffles. I know <laughs> yeah. you guys do that. You know what? I'd rather give people all tickets. And then afterward, if you like it, I'll ask you for money. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's how it works. That's another side of the works. business. Can we talk a little, uh, there's a lot of things we want to talk about, but yeah. that's another side of this whole yes. equation, right? Yes. I think, did you, did you naturally gravitate to that? Did you kind of understand that, that I love playing the oboe, I, I've got this vision of what I'd like to do and how I'd like to look at serious music being played differently, but what about the business side? Yeah. Um, that's where I think a lot of our musicians struggle. I think, it, so I do a lot of these talks at mm -hmm. conservatories and just talking about how to start your own group. And number one, you have to be an extrovert. And if you aren't an extrovert, you have to partner with one. And I think some musicians struggle hard. with that, right? Yes, because they go in, of course. In, you know, there's just me and the piano, Absolutely. me and the instrument Absolutely. kind of a thing, right? And you can partner Except with someone Paul to English. do Except Paul English. Yeah, he can do both <laughs> yeah. at all times, at the same moment, Right, in fact. at the same moment, right, right. <laughs> So I think you do have to be very comfortable asking for money, but if you have if you have casted your vision, and that's if you have cast your vision, and that is what I always talk about, is when you have an idea, you have to be the vision caster. It's kind of like Dungeons and Dragons game. It's resurging. But you have to be the dungeon master where you say, here's the vision, follow along on my team in the quest. And those people, you can't just say to a development person, go get me money. First of all, you can't afford them. But second of all, it's really you telling your passionate story. So that's the most important thing is you have to be comfortable laying the vision because then you're not asking for money for yourself, which is right. where most people are uncomfortable. Right. You're laying the vision and saying, that's where we're headed. Come this is follow who we are. me. Right, yes. exactly. And so you just have to be very comfortable just asking and you practice it all the time. Right. But I just saw, saw St. Paul Chamber Orchestra you know, move to that model from being a very heavily boarded, 60 people on their board and traditional churn moves management type thing of buy a ticket, get a subscription, move right. to a donor. Instead, they switch. Well. They're like, now we're an investor model. We're going to be lean and mean, and when you invest in what we do, you get tickets. And so that's how I was able to start right away. Right. Tickets are inexpensive or, or right. you know, $35 Accessible. or right. free at Miller right. or something like right. that. Right. Accessible, and we do things like vet ticks. We do, yes. you know, um, big brothers, big sisters. We do all these ways to pull people into what we already do. Um, but yes, that's the way. It